each reach advantage. With the official introductions, we go inside. Three rounds this scheduled in the UFC Bantamweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's a freestyle fighter standing five feet, nine inches tall. Weighing at officially 136 pounds, his professional record stands at six victories and two defeats. Fighting out of Shreveport, Louisiana, USA. Here is Tony Primetime Kelly. And across the octagon stands his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. His background, Sanda Wushu. At 5 feet 6 inches tall, he too weighed in officially 136 pounds. In 12 professional fights, his record, 8 victories with 4 defeats. Fighting out of the capital city of Amman, Jordan, here is the royal fighter, Ali Al-Kaisi! And your referee in charge of the action is Wukash Bosatsky. So we have a three-round bantamweight bout now between two fighters that posted exciting debuts last month. Thank you very much, Red, letting us know. Scheduled for the first of three possible rounds, Red. there was Red. Ali oh. al Kaisi against Tony Primetime Kelly. Kelly in the blue, al Kaisi in the grey. Both standing orthodox. There al he is. al Kaisi saying he's coming in with the pressure of a nation on his shoulders, but he's kind of ready to wear that what did i tell you that monster energy sign is his he's gonna keep a hold of that at all costs he said he wanted to be a little bit more technical though dan he is however a true fighter at his core tony kelly that's it it's an instinct in him and you can see that in the way he fights you can very much see that karate style though as he's hanging back on his on his rear leg posturing ready to fire that straight left out there maybe even a body kick oh, oh wow Straight into a triangle, maybe. Yeah, that leg is over the yeah, shoulder. He's yeah, be careful. He's got a nice trap guard there. And Tony Kelly knows it as well. He's waiting because he knows he needs to grab a hold of that shin and clamp that pretty quick because that is not a full triangle. Obviously, he's only got his ankles crossed. He needs to get a foot. To, here we go. Now he's grabbing his shin. He's going to try and pull that down. But you can see al is he's driving forward, which is uh, putting the, the flexibility of Tony Kelly under pressure here. Yeah, he's pushing into that hamstring, trying to... Break that grip on the on the wrist there. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah, I don't think see. He's gonna try to slide that arm through now. Oh, oh he's got again. Speaking. That's nice. Speaking. Speaking. nice job there from Malkaisi. Good scramble. He's on the neck here. This is his thing. He's got excellent guillotine attacks. Mm -hmm. That's and his favorite grappling right? technique. And he jumps on things that don't even look like they're in a lot of the times. I, I remember watching a few of his fights and seeing him jump on a neck and thinking, there's no way he's yeah. going to get this. And then he clamps it up and gets it's the one tap. one of those guys you can't tell. He's got that squeeze. That, right? you, you know, nothing in what you're seeing can predict that. It's just a gift. I mean, look at Brian Ortega, for example, who we're going to be seeing uh, next week. He's got a hell of a clamp on him. And he doesn't look like one of those kind of individuals that can put that type of squeeze on. A lot of it is down to time on the mat. Patience here from Tony Kelly. Probably knows that if he scrambles, he might be vulnerable. Yeah, he's definitely going to watch his neck. Doesn't want to try to pop up and give al a chance to grab onto that. So the referee has already warned al saying he wants more action. This is good for me. Keep yeah. chopping away with knees. I've got no problem with this. Working to deaden the thighs, maybe even start working to the shoulders and the arms. Yeah, he's in a dominant position right? here, so to, to lose this would be a little rough. Yeah, you, I don't think you can take this away from him, especially given the fact that he is a neck attacker. Tony Kelly's controlling the hands, but it's yeah. so difficult to see how he's controlling. I mean, he might have a, might have a hold of the glove here here. It's difficult to tell. Well, that's a bit of a better position now for al Kaisi. He's kind of got that over-under. A good squaring up by al Kaisi as Kelly looks to sit out. He's looking for it. There it is. Oh, there. He's snapped the neck. There it is. This he's is. stepping over as well. This is al Kaisi's thing. This is his move. If he gets a hold of the yeah, neck. Yeah, and that's oh, the mountain. No problem. Oh, Tony Kelly's he's got full guard now. But he's in a bad position still. This could be very tight. He's fighting the hands right now. Yeah, he's turned his chin into the center line. He might be able to squeeze his way out of this. Armin oh, guillotine oh, attempt oh, by al Kaisi. Driving forward. He's got some space. Oh, nice job there, Tony down. Kelly. Nice work to get out of that guillotine. That was tight, but he did all the right things. He tripoded up, got his head down, got that space under his chin. Nice takedown. That's al Kaisi's takedown right there. Tony Kelly threatening here. Yeah, he's Back got into this. something on the shoulder. He's oh, it up. look at this. 
It's a very awkward position. He's right on that carotid artery with that calf. Yeah. It's not, not quite a triangle, but he can certainly attack that arm. The right arm of Alkais is vulnerable here. Yeah, interesting position that he has here. And if he can get that hand underneath his armpit, he can use his hips to posture up. He is Alkaisis. not comfortable, you can not tell. Oh, straight oh, up on the opposite arm. side. Can he put enough pressure on the elbow to get the tap is the question. He can't quite get the angle right now. Yeah, Alkaisi knows where the pressure's coming from here. He needs to keep that arm moving. Oh, he's going for the other side. Still not out of yeah. danger though, that triangle yeah, still locked interesting. up. Interesting. It's just not, I don't think it's a choking position here is the thing. I think the only option is the arm, right? Well, trying to put I my... mean, his own shoulder great, is pressed great. up against that great. side of his neck, and Tony Kelly's sh uh, calf, excuse me, hey, is on the other now. side of the front. Oh, he's got the other one. He's got the other one. Very interesting. So back for round number two, and we've learned that Tony Kelly is very aggressive off of his back, already thrown up four submission attacks. Al Kaisi with one of his own. I think Al Kaisi needs to change his fight name from the Royal Fighter to Rubber Arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that arm was locked, but like Dan was saying, during that round, it, he couldn't quite get enough extension on it, even though it looked really, it was almost there, but just from the angle and the way he had that almost hybrid triangle locked up, he couldn't quite hip into it the way he wanted to. Yeah, the, the challenge was uh, in extending the arm was because the shoulder was popping through at the same time. When you've got somebody triangled, obviously you're controlling the shoulders as well, and that's what allows you to extend the arm. The question for me here is how Al Kais's arms are feeling, given the fact that he was the last one on the scales yesterday. And he was shaking it out uh, quite. Yeah. When he walked over to the corner, he was shaking it out quite a lot. Well, that's, I gave you the answer, Jen. They feel rubbery. Yeah, I mean, my <laughs> arm, uh, my arm would have broken, even though uh, my shoulder was through. If you extend my elbow like that, I just he definitely has some flexibility, or he doesn't, and he's tough. <laughs> some people are hypermobile, isn't it? Billy has gone in his favor there because he was making it good to the ref that he was okay. Yeah. I've seen people step in before when it gets to well, that I've point. seen Dan Hardy say he's okay too and his <laughs> shoulder is twisted 30 different ways that it shouldn't go. Didn't Corey Sanhagen get in a similar position yeah, as well? Yes, he did against Alcantara. Alcantara yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was like, I called that one. I couldn't believe it. We'll be seeing him later on in our main event here from Fight Island. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to think what Al Kais's forearms feel like because he was clamped onto that guillotine for a while. And there were some body lock scrambles where he was clamped on and using a lot of grip strength. And that's one of the first things that goes after you've had a, a, a tough weight cut. He was what, on the scales 10 minutes before the end yeah. of the time. So, oh, good low kick by Tony Kelly on a single leg. Nice work here. Clamp back on the neck again. I do like that he did that. Just he failed on that takedown and immediately threw like a three punch combination, grabbed the neck. Well, let's see what Al Kaisi does here. If he's got any any strength left, like Dan saying, in that grip, I mean, easily worked out from Tony Kelly. And we're seeing some good patience here from Tony Kelly in this fight. Well, I think both of these fighters came in on short notice to make right. their debuts, and that the jitters. Whoa! Oh, oh, he's hurt. He's rolling. Oh. That was a stinging oh. right hand from Tony Kelly, who's now clinched. Nice elbow on the inside. Can he Al get space Kaisi. here? Al Kaisi's is holding himself up at the moment. He's trying. He always using Tony Kelly to help him. Oh, that was a, looked like a really nice transition to the back immediate from Kelly. Well worked by Al Kaisi, who's going deep on that underhook, but easily countered yeah. by Kelly. just floating through. Big elbows here from Kelly. You're right, Knight. He was floating there on top. Nice way to just kind of ride where he needs to go in that position. Yeah. Look at, oh, I thought he was looking for the arm triangle there. This is good pressure from him. Al Kaisi was definitely hurt for a moment. Tony Kelly recognized it, but then got clinched and tied up. Now finds himself into a good position, but Al Kaisi seems to be finding his way back into this clear in his head. This is really high level stuff from both of these fighters. 
who put together pretty scrappy performances last time. And you can definitely see they have all the fundamentals and more. John, I've just watched that replay of what, what hurt al -Kaisi. It was a clean knee right up the center line. Beautiful timing from Tony Kelly as al -Kaisi level changed. Oh, that was a good takedown. Really nice, straight into side control as well. And that, that takedown from al -Kaisi, he doesn't hide that. That's his move. Yeah. He gets that body lock, angles off, and just drops you to the side. Gets his knee behind you, lines his hips up, and he's done it. I think it might be the third time he's done that in this fight so far. But so far, Tony Kelly also seems to find his way either into a submission attempt or back up to his feet. But this is a nice chance for al Kaisi to recover here in the second round. One of the drawbacks from uh, with Tony Kelly's style, as we saw in his, in his last fight, is that he does get taken down because he, he, does, he does offer that takedown when he's standing trading with his opponents. Good work here, scrambling back to guard. He throws a triangle up again. Yeah. al Kaisi's wise to it this time. Flashbacks of the first round. Yeah. He said, no, thank you. <laughs> Really active hips by Tony Kelly, aggressive guard work. Great to see. Now they're having a little, little chat. I think that was a, you got me good. And Tony Kelly said, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll dub it for you guys, don't worry. I'm going to start hiring you for movies, right? you know what I mean? I don't yes. care if you speak the language, Dan Hardy translates movies. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if we've mentioned this as well, fellas, the fact this is a bantamweight contest for Tony Kelly. He typically steps out as a featherweight, looking like he's got plenty of energy here. On the he's neck defending again. this sub, gets through the round. Let's have a look at this knee that fires straight up the center. Oh, beautiful timing on that. Really nice. And that is definitely a deterrent for al -Kaisi. level changing. Third and final round here of this intriguing bantamweight contest. And they go straight to work. And it's a big body lock takedown from al -Kaisi. As you said, Paul, he loves that one. And I was going to say that Tony Kelly, I agree with a lot of the stuff his corner was saying, but the way they were talking to him, I knew he was going to come out very aggressive, and he manages to get back up to his feet, which is good for him. But with that aggressiveness, al is not going to play around, especially after getting rocked in the second round. He's going to look for a takedown. Doesn't look like he's hurt by that. Certainly, oh! Oh! Certainly hurt by that. Same shot in the center of the guard. Now he's in top position. I would expect him to try and separate here. It might be the smart thing to do. Getting tangled up last time was what allowed al Kaisi to recover. That's two times up the center oh, with that for a submission. He's going to go for the arming guillotine here. Again, time to recover though for al Kaisi. Yep. Yeah, interesting decision making here by Tony Kelly, who had al Kaisi right where he wanted him. Looking for that dance. Nice strong neck though by al Kaisi, who's using that underhook to get back to his feet. Really nice work by al Kaisi. who must still be struggling from being hurt. Yeah, and that kick slash knee was a lot like we've seen from Marlon Moraes when he knocked yes. out al Sterling. It looked like it was a left kick, but al Kaisi, being the guy that he is, level changes and lands right on the knee. Once again, this is smart for Kelly. Let him back up. Yeah. He's got to be rocked. He's got to be reeling from that knee. Oh, that's a nice right from al -Kaisi. There is no quit oh, no. in the Jordanian. He has the hopes of the nation, of a region on his shoulders, stepping out close to home here in Abu Dhabi. Kelly's got to start trying to feint his hands to get to al -Kaisi to level change again. I mean, that knee up the centre line was beautiful. Second time it landed. Same kind of style, and just as you were saying, Felder, it was very much like the Marlon Moraes kick. It was a body kick that he threw on Aljamain Sterling as, as he level changed onto it, caught the knee. Let's see how Tony Kelly's cardio holds up after he made a rare weight cut down to Bantamweight. He was assisted by the PI, but he looks like he's either conserving himself or oh, slowing just a little bit. Maybe he's just picking the big punch. Yeah, that was nice timing on that rear uppercut. Yeah, I think he's just being careful, John, because al -Kaisi, every time he gets a little overzealous, has taken him down right. and gotten some control. And even though he's done a fantastic job of getting back up, oh, nice knee to the body. That might have hurt al -Kaisi a little bit. And he's got to get his hands up, though, because al -Kaisi is so winging. It's a smart from Tony. Oh! oh! Fist. He's swinging and oh! swinging oh! And again. <laughs> and he paint brushes his face on the retreat. Mark De La Rosa is going crazy. Both corners are trying to get their fighters to give 
every drop of juice left. You can tell when Tony Kelly's taking a big, a big shot because he holds his hands like John Lineker does. It shows you the UFC on the back of his gloves yeah. like he's holding kettlebells. <laughs> Starts walking towards you. Oh, we've been treated to some fights already, haven't right. we, gents? <laughs> Check there. I go, I go. I go. Here we go, Felder. This is your speciality. Yep. And oh, the old. Oh, the boys. He was yeah, a little bit easy. Turned into a front kick to right. the groin right. there. I'm going to yeah. go ahead and. He's good to go. That's That's okay. One for the evening, yeah, gentlemen. Oh, he's, he's got a tally. Let's go see if you want. Come on. Tally it up. Okay. He's got him carved Fight. into the wall in his hotel room Cup as well. Check Felder is back. <laughs> I'm surprised Al Kaisi didn't take a little longer there to recover, given the fact that he's taken some shots. Yeah, yeah, that would have been a good time for him to kind of get his bearings back. But Al Kaisi whipping away at the legs of Kelly. Kelly opting for something a little bit more concussive. And a good look at the clock up there. Or is he just looking at himself? I'm not quite I don't sure. Know, yeah, but maybe he's looking at our total strikes up there. Maybe he's just a UFC fan. And he wished he was watching the fight. <laughs> Well, there is no time to admire your work in a round like this. Everything to play for, third and final here in this bantamweight fixture. You can tell oh, you can tell the level change is coming. I was just about to say that. Every time Tony Kelly pressures, the eagerness of Al Kaisi dips on that lead leg. He's running. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly saying he's running. Al Kaisi said no. He's trying to get that level change and finish this with a big takedown. Hard to know how to score this, though. I mean, he's, twice he's hurt him, but do you count those as, as big enough shots to score him the round? Yeah, I think so. I... Last 10 seconds. We got I don't know, they have been back and forth, and yeah. It's... Oh. 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 And it was a big kick to finish it off. How can I see it? Hey, 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 That's all you did was run. Keep him, keep him. Kelly, a little upset, saying all you did was run. We will.